ओके Your source for everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Natural. Metaphysical. All those things you've been wondering about? Are you ready to go deeper into the realms of the unknown? I hope you've got your walking shoes on. Because life is an adventure. And this is the journey. Come on, let's go. Hello and welcome to the show, everyone. It's the Journey Radio Show, and we're the She Squatchers. I'm Jen Cruz, your host, and I've got my trusty teammates. Both of them are here with me tonight. Whoop. I've got Jenna Grover. Hi, Jenna. Hello, hello, hello. And we've got Tammy Trichel's back. Here I am. <laughs> she is a blue belt, y'all. Whoop, she whoop. tested and she passed her blue belt, but blue belt test in kickboxing. So just have to show her off. She's she's our security Yay. team. Just so you know, <laughs> she's the one you got to watch out for. <laughs> Halfway to black belt. That's right. That's right. So when Bigfoot comes charging at us, we'll just stand behind Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'll just give him a kiss. <laughs> That's the other plan. <laughs> kicks exactly. if the kiss and fails she's got kicks so anyway <laughs> we, we've got our wonderful guest from last week rejoining us because he's got some amazing stories that after last week's show when we went off the air he started telling us all these really cool stories about these encounters that he had in a tent while camping with and and i'm just like whoa we need to hear this on the show you need to come back and he said yes so with us tonight, we've got Mel Scahan back from Washington State. Hey, Mel, are you there? Yes, I am, ladies. Uh, thank you for inviting me back, and uh, it's, a, it's a good show. Yes, I'm so excited that you're here. And and I know I cut you off when you were telling the stories last week, because I'm like, no, 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 I want to hear this. I want to hear this on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've been waiting yeah. patiently, or kind of impatiently, but still, I've been waiting. Well, good, 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 because uh, they are some fantastic stories, you know, and as as we've covered in the past, uh, you know, when uh, we're not we're out tenting, you know, the main thing is to stay in the, in the tent and let them do whatever they're going to do uh, and uh, always announce your your next moves that you're going to do, whether you're going to step outside or, you know, um, anything, then you just announce to them that, uh, hey, I'm coming outside, or I got to go to the bathroom. I got to get something to drink or, you know, some, some, something along that lines. And then that gives them time to vacate. And then, um, then you do whatever you do. And then you go back into the tent. And the, the, the biggest thing now for me is that uh, I, I said in the past is that I don't try to prove them to anybody. I don't need to do any recordings or anything like that. Um, if um, I want to enjoy them, uh, it's just going to be me to enjoy them. And, and, come up with these stories that you know, I'm eventually going to tell you guys. So, and, and, and the listening audience. Awesome. I can't wait to hear about it. Yeah. And so um, I think, you know, what started the conversation out was, as I asked Jenna uh, last week, what was the closest that she'd ever come to one? And then you guys, you gals had said it was somewhere right around 30, 35 feet, if I remember correctly. And then I told her, I said it was about an inch to an inch and a half is the closest that I've ever been to one. And then so and then after that, you know, the show ended, then I got into the story. And uh, so that's what brought me back to, to this week. And uh, there's so many good stories out there that we've had while out there. And, um, but, uh, I will, 
try to get through these as fast as I can. And uh, I know it's not Halloween. I mean, it's almost Christmas, so I don't know how to turn it into a Christmas story. So <laughs> it's like a big no worries. Present. Bigfoot story is a gift. So there you go. That's how it's a Christmas story. There you okay. go. I love it. There we go. <laughs> <Put a bow laughs> <on it. laughs> but um, so uh, last week, you know, we got into the we got into one that uh, I was within one inch, inch and a half of one, my wife and I. And um, but to, to warm up the audience, I'll save that one kind of last because that's the closest that we've ever been to them. And it's probably the furthest encounter that I've had away from Washington State because it, that that story took place in, in Utah. And if people are interested and want to know, you know, it's just a couple miles west of a, a town called Monticello, Utah. And um, so um, I'll get more into that one uh, after a bit. But um, the, um, the closest, the set, you know, I, I talked about camping and I talked about, you know, using people at, you know, I, I, I hate to do this, but I have to do it. And, I, and people don't realize that I use them for bait. And uh, so, um, you know, female voices seem to be attracted. Kids activities seem to be a really big attractant, a, a bigger attractant to them. And so when they hear uh, folks out enjoying camping and everything and not doing anything negative out there that that kind of brings them in closer uh, and then want to be around you also you know as Jen and I had talked before about the Native American portion of it is introducing yourself when you go into somebody's home and when you go out there into the woods then you're in their home so we always like to I, well I always like to introduce myself uh, in, in my way and then introduce the people that are with me. And that seems to uh, mellow the, uh, the type of encounters that we always have and to show that I have respect for them and then in return would like to have that type, same type of respect from them. Mel, Mel yes. speaking of respect, do these people that you're using as bait know their bait? <laughs> I just have to ask. Not You're the new people. You're talking about respect. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, not, the, not the new people. Okay. Uh, the ones that, that that have known me throughout my entire forestry career or my life know that, hey, you know, when we go with Mel, something's definitely going to happen and he's going to be oh. leading us here or there for some odd reason. He won't clue us in on totally what's going on out there until it's too late. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. I, yeah, oh. I understand. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, when I don't mean to do it, but, you know, when they when people started wanting to go uh, either hunting, fishing, hiking, mountain climbing, rock climbing anywhere with me out in the woods on the reservation, I would bring them along. But along those areas, we're also in certain places where they frequent. And I know that from the years and the stories that I've collected in these areas. So I, I have an idea what's gonna happen, uh, but it's them that, the unknowing that they, oh, well, you know, I heard this, what is that? You know, th that, you know the, the classic stuff. And then you go like, oh, you're all right. Don't worry about it. You'll, you'll be fine, I, I got you. <laughs> Until we bring the, the blue belt out. And the blue belt can take care of them. <laughs> that right, Tammy. <laughs> I got your back. <laughs> I would go just because it'd be fun. I don't have to bring my my blue belt material energy with me. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I'm not saying that I don't fear them or anything like that. I I do at times because it's unknown what type of what which one you're going to run into are you going to run into a, a, a two foot one or are you going to run into the 12 foot one and when you run into something that's three feet taller than you then you know of course you're gonna have a, a little shimmy and shake here and, and uh i can admit that i've used people for shields and uh that were initially bait and uh one guy got a hold of me uh, last week about it and he wanted me to tell a story 
And I said, well, if it comes up, I, I'll mention you as the shield. Yes. But uh, oh, no. No. <laughs> and uh, so but yeah, I, I, I have my fears with them as well. I mean, uh, I'm not going to you know lie, lie about it. And uh, I'm more definitely afraid of snakes, something slithering around the ground than I am something walking around at night because once I understand the behavior and, and, and respect them, then that that's going to really dictate how that evening's going to go. And uh, so keep the negativity away. I mean, we don't, you know, as in our tribe, uh, we don't cry at night. We don't whistle at night. We don't, we don't go howling around at night because we're going to attract that type of being towards us. And, uh, the other portion of that is that when we come back down, there's certain times that we're, we're allowed to talk about and speak about. It. And in certain circles, you don't openly talk about it. You, there's a, a, a moment, you know, within uh, that time of day that that uh, type of uh, speech or conversations are allowed. And uh, so I, I, you know, I've learned that over the years and uh so it, it, it took, oh boy, it took 25 years of not listening to my elders until I really understood what they were really talking about. And we covered this in other shows. So uh, then, you know, the hair collecting, uh, the bedding, the nests, the, the ones found in the snow, everything. So, uh, but um, the one that I'm going to open up with uh, happened along the Pacific Crest Trail here in Washington State. Um, I had some, uh, I had, uh, one other adult and two kids with us at the time. And this was a new area. And, uh, when we drove up to the spot, um, it wasn't a very wide area. And, but I saw, you know, as I pointed out, if you find a camping ring out there, some, then, you know, people frequent it. And so, that's where I went. That's where we pulled off. And um, so we set up camp. And the next thing that I do is go out and look for the markers to find out how they're going to come into the area. And when I identify that, I pretty much well know how I want my camp to be moved around after that. So um, camp was set up and then we went for a walk. I just told them we were going for a walk. I didn't tell them where we were going. So we started circling the camp, looking at different things. And then I didn't notice too much, um, 75%, around 75% of the camp. So I said, well, let's go up the road. And what I found along the road that continued up for another 300 feet then dead ended um, was probably the area that they were, they were coming in to that spot. And as I walked up the road, then I started noticing the markers. And, um, so I begin to tell them, I go, this is where they're going to, this is where our visitors are going to come in from tonight. Um, and they was like, what visitors? I said, well, we'll find out later. And um, is it a bear? Is it, what, what is it? And I said, well, we'll find out later if they do come in. And I go, but they're going to come down this road and then they're going to angle off. They're going to angle in on this road from this spot right here because that was the last marker. And then we walked up into the trees and I was like, yep, this is where they're gonna come in, hit the road and then walk down towards the camp. And then we continued on up the road and I didn't see too many markers further up. So we'll fast forward to the evening, kids are playing, having a conversation, just you know, out camp and making s'mores and everything. And uh, come bedtime, 9.30, 10 o'clock, um, we all slept in one tent, in a big eight-man tent, and uh, kids were inside. We were, you know, all four of us were inside, and um, my friend was not is not a camper, so spent most of the time hands clenched, praying, look like all the time, just like skittish, and. So in the tent, same thing. I go, what's the matter? Because I can't sleep. 
I go, why not? Because you said something was going to come into this camp. What is it? A bear or what? And I was like, huh, well, well, I, I'm not going to say. So laying there, all of a sudden you can hear within the hour that we got, got inside the tent, you can hear something walking on the road. And like I said, whatever was going to come into this camp was going to come down the road. And then that's what I kept hearing. I kept hearing this crunching of the of the rock as it stepped. So each step as it came down, I heard it. And so did she. And then she's like, what is that? I had to go, I don't know. We'll find out. And uh, so he got closer and walked by the car where the car was parked on the, uh, walked by the truck where it was parked on the road, went past the truck and then was in, in our camp. Came over to the tent, and this tent's about six feet tall. And it went over to the edge of the tent by the door, and it smacked the top of the tent. And the immediate, you could hear the fear in the tent of what was going on. And um, so I just hand signaled everything. It's okay. and. Uh, so it stood there right there at the front of the tent while the other one and then the third one came in and they I had set out on the table uh, some children's or infant toys, some crinkly toys, stuff that made noise so that they would have something to, to play with while they're out there. And you can hear these things being squished and and then moved around on the table and everything and then the one that was at the tent just kept going, boom, checking to see. And I told you, snoring, snoring on the inside maintains that, you know, we're safe out here. He's, they're still asleep. And so I just kept up that. And um, while the one you saw standing right there at the door of the tent moved to our left, and then behind us, and then he heard the the kids on the floor. And then he went to um, the floor, and he took in this big, huge breath. Just huge amount of air, like he was sniffing, and he kept doing this. And then he stood up, and then he smacked the top of the tent of where he was at. And in the meantime, you can hear the other two over there crinkling away, playing away with the stuff, moving it around on the table. And, you know, as I said in the uh, previous last week, is that I, I dictate where they come in from. And I put stuff down to block off areas that I don't want them to, to approach us from. And so they stayed to our left the whole time because I didn't want them to be able to have that whole 360 uh, availability of us and so they stayed on our left side and all I could hear what next to me was this then the blankets were shaking and then I can hear the teeth chattering and just scared and um, so I said I go I can tell them to go away if you want and uh, but one of the kids on the floor had made a noise and then that's when they vamoosed and then they were gone. Uh, the kid woke up, sat up and asked what was going on because she thought she heard something outside. And um, so she must have been a partially awake at the time that she was being sniffed out on the ground. And uh, that's happened to us before where, uh, where we were backpacking at one time in a tent and there were three of us in there. And, and my oldest daughter was 12 at the time. She woke me up and said, Dad, there's something outside. And uh, so I was listening. And then the same exact thing happened that time was you heard this thing take all this air. In. And then he, he visited all three of us to, to get our sense on all three of us. So and. Uh, and then he just left because there was other people that uh, in the back country that were uh, probably about 300 feet from us that were making noise that were still awake. 
So I, back to the story. So um, the, she goes, the, the, the daughter, she goes, um, was there something outside? And uh, so she's like, no, no, go back to sleep. Everything's okay. And uh, so got out, now said it was coming out and everything. And then went to see the stuff that was on the table. Um, it was still on the table, but not in the places that I had, it, it had been moved around. And then they also got inside the, we have a, a screened awning that they got into and you can hear the pots and pans rattling around at that at some point during this time too. And so I put everything back where I was supposed to and then went, got back inside. And then uh, I heard, we're leaving a light on. I said, okay, that's fine. If, you know, if nobody's comfortable with them being around, then, you know, I'm going to, you know, go along with them and not continue what I want to do. I, I, I want them to be safe. So turn the light on. And then I was told, I'm never going camping with you again, unless it's a KOA and there's hundreds of people around us. We're not oh. camping in the woods anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So I... um. You know, like I said, I, I respect those people when, when, you know, you know, not everybody, you know, everybody's got their limit. And, uh, and that's been my main thing when people come out with me is all you got to do is say something and then that's it. Then we'll, then we'll leave. Gotcha. But, gotcha. But that's yeah, true. never, never, never again did they go camping with me again, ever. To this oh. day. <laughs> are they really, I mean, are they telling people this story going, we don't know what it is. It could have been Bigfoot. Or do you think they're just going, oh, we were so scared. It, it must have been an animal because it, I mean, it couldn't be Bigfoot. Oh, which one, which oh, one do you think? Yeah. The shadow that he casted over our tent, they, they, she knew it was a Bigfoot. So, yeah. Oh. And um, so I, I let them know what was going on. And, uh, you know, we, um, you know, like I said, we turned the lights on and everything. And, if uh, anything else was going to be coming in the rest of the night, then, you know, just turn a, another light on if you wanted to. I said, if you want them to go away, just tell them to go away and they'll they'll stay away. But uh, as soon as you fall asleep, though, and start snowing, I'm sure they're going to, you know, watch from afar. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be a problem because I always snore. <laughs> <laughs> he is I think not all, lying. He I think all three lying. of us. I snore, I'm sure. Don't know. Yeah. I used to snore out. Yes. Jen, oh, you, Jen, you, you snore. snore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's, she thinks her snores are cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to admit it. So, yeah, I, you know, and I've learned, you know, over the years is that's what makes them comfortable and, and knowing that, you know, at night people are sleeping. So, you know, a lot of people snore. And I'm sure yeah. if they kept the diary and everything, oh, blue car, five people in it, da 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 da, snores. Yes, those. I want them to come back because I can have fun with them and and, and not be bothered. It's mm -hmm. the light sleepers that kind of, you know, and get to enjoy a lot more experiences. The ones that the sleep through the whole thing, or pretend to snore. Yeah, or pretend to snore. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so, Tammy, what was the closest that you've been uh, close to one then? Well, actually, that 30 feet, um, I was the one who took the, the video of that footage. So up on top of the mountain. Oh. And were I'd they like to get closer. <laughs> were they aggressive to you gals? or uh -uh. Did they No, they didn't mind. that. They knew we were there. We were not quiet at all, at all. And they let us record. They knew we were sitting there with all of our equipment. They didn't run away, you know, and we didn't try to get any closer and they let us record. So it was a great, it was a great moment. Yeah. Those are the best ones where, you know, just um, let them, let them do, you know, respect them and, you know, and, and don't try to, you know, my, my elders always say, well, you're always chasing them. Stop chasing them. And I was like, I don't chase them. They just happen to be, where, where I am, so you know, some people was like, well, Mel's a magnet, so I mean, he always attracts them. <laughs> well, I think that whatever we look for, we find. So 
if you're putting the energy out there that you want to find something, it, it's going to come to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And uh, if you know the signs too, you know what to look for while you're out there, then um, that's, that, that is another key point of, of being able to, I, I don't I wouldn't say successful, but knowing that, that, the, that they're at some point they're there, whether it's that week or when somebody else is there in a couple of weeks. True. Very true, very true. So how old were the kids that were on this trip? Uh, 14 and 13. Okay, so they weren't like little snacks. <laughs> no, 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 they weren't on those snacks, no, no. Kids are friends, not food. <laughs> <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> yeah, and, but they, they, like I said, my, my daughter, my youngest daughter, uh, she's 18 now and was always going out with me um, ever since she could walk, really, and, uh, you know, not knowing what she was getting herself into when we would go walking around at night or hiking uh, anywhere. Um, but now that she kind of caught on of what's out there, potentially out there uh, to her that, uh, oh, no, uh, she hasn't been out camping with me in about five years now. So. <laughs> so once the realization hit that Bigfoot was real, she said, uh, no, thanks, Dad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah, what you're this saying? Is, yeah. This isn't fun anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. Maybe she'll take it back up later. Well, I hope so. I mean, uh, she's learned a lot of different areas. I mean, she's a hunter. She's a fisherman. She's I've taken her uh, up um, near the summit of Mount Adams, up on the Yakima Reservation. We've hiked and camped in the backcountry a lot. I mean, she's an outdoors girl. But uh, she hit the teenage years and discovered boys. And so uh, dad's no fun anymore. So <laughs> I remember Sorry. when that happened with my grandpa. He was so upset when I didn't want to go fishing. Oh, I feel bad. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> That's so sad, I go Jen. Fishing You're any so day cruel. Now. No, I'm kidding. Huh? <laughs> I said, You're so cruel. And I said, I'm just kidding, though. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, we have just a few more minutes before we head to break. So we got to keep fill it up with some story. What else happened? <laughs> OK, um, so the next story is uh, is a work related one where. Um, it was taking too many hours travel time to and from to the job site. And so they decided, hey, you know, you guys want to go camp for a couple of weeks. And I was like, heck, yeah. and. Uh, I said, I have all the gear, and then whoever wants to join me can join me. If not, then I'll be going out there by myself. But I had a, a co-worker. Um, he'd worked with me for a year, and he's from Oklahoma. And um, we um, had gone all over the reservation, and we hiked miles. And, and uh, so when we were out there, when we would arrive at the job sites, we would hear the whoops. We'd hear something whooping in the distance or we would hear something howling in the distance. We'd hear the wood knocks. We'd hear the rock clacking. We'd hear the bird whistles. And then I'd ask him, I go, what do you think that is? And he goes, ah, oh, you know, it's probably just a woodpecker. Uh, that's a that's a coyote. That's a you know, he always had a known animal that he associated with and being the skeptic. I mean, he was a huge skeptic. And uh, even though uh, back home in Oklahoma, you know, they have um, Bigfoot sightings in 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 Oklahoma and in his area. He just played it off and just thought those people, you know, as cuckoos and everything else like that. And uh, so um, he volunteered to to join me. So I said, okay, well, I have an extra tent, so we're not sleeping in the same tent together. So I packed up all our gear, got everything all situated except for the place that we were going to camp. And we weren't going to decide that until we got up there. And um, we um, found a spot in this meadow. So we could basically just travel 15 minutes down the road to our, our, our job site, you know, make it a longer working day, and then come back and, you know, enjoy the evening. 
And um, so we had set the camp up and I sent Jen this photo. Uh, we had this uh, white suburban um, Ford Expedition vehicle that we uh, used to get up there. And you'll see two tents and uh, an awning, a screened awning. And uh, the two tents that are, are there, um, he was the one on the left-hand side and I was the one on the right-hand side. And I always situate, I always situate my camp to limit the where I'm going to be approached. And so that's exactly what I did in this meadowed area. And I used the vehicle on one side and I used a down log. The tent that I'm talking about mine is that uh, white and gray one in the background there. And you'll see behind it, there's a down log that I used to limit uh, them to be able to come in closer to the tent. And I used the screen awning on one side and there's a bunch of little guidelines that are tied down for the wind and everything like that. So it makes makes it harder for them to, to come around the tent. And the only place that they can come in is straight forward. And the vehicle that's on the right hand side, I just backed it up next to the tent. The tent here on the left hand side that you see is his tent. And uh, he moved it further away uh, than this initial picture and towards the, the trees. And uh, so we had gone out that night or that day and uh, did our, our, uh, our work and started hearing uh, whistles. I started hearing the whistles. And so they, they'd been on us for a good four hours. And um, so I asked him, I go, do you hear the, the whistling going on out there? He goes, yeah, I hear it, but those are birds. I said, no, those aren't birds. I said, those, are, I said, those aren't birds. I said, talk to me in about half hour, 45 minutes, and then let me, let me know what you think. So we're doing our work and hiking to the next plots and everything. And then he goes, stops and he goes, you know what? He goes, that is a big bird. I said, yes, it's not a big yellow bird either. I go, those, those aren't birds. And um, I told him, I said, just listen closely and uh, you will begin to understand how they mimic everything that uh, is around them to try to blend in. And um, then we'll talk a little bit more about what is going to happen or how close they, they'll feel comfortable and coming to us. I said, nobody camps in this area, uh, not very often because it's hard to get into. And um, so he's listening and he's walking and then he comes and he goes, you know what? Those aren't birds. You're right. I said, well, what do you think they are? And he goes, I don't know what they are, but it's not a bird. And I go, there, there's like three of them, one over here, here, and here. And they all seem let's, to be. Let's hold, let's, let's hold right there. We're going to go to our commercial break and we'll be right back with the rest of this story. Hang on, everybody. Okay. Awesome. I love your stories. They're so awesome. I do too. I was like, I don't want to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> A cliffhanger now. Now we got the day out of the way. Now we're going to get into the evening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So while we're on our commercial break, everybody, check out my necklace. Can you see yeah. it? It's it's Jenna's design of the Bigfoot of the Bigfoot uh, charm that doesn't make your skin skin turn green and it doesn't tarnish. You can find it on her website at gbythec.com and click on Shop Bigfoot. Thank I know you. she's doing free shipping right now, so you better go check it out so you can get it by Christmas and oh, look at her little so squatch cute. monster. Those are look adorable. At it. And it sits like this. Oh, so Isn't it cute? I know. I've been sitting here it. petting it because it's so soft. So if you, I hope you can't see my fingers because I've been like. Blah, 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 blah. It's, really <laughs> it's you know when you when you gotta have something to do with your fingers. So it's great. We are still on video. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot momentarily. <laughs> that's when it's the best. Jennifer. Gets. <laughs> Jennifer. Gets. The I, I bought a puppet in Canada, a hand puppet, and it almost looks just like what you have there. Oh. And uh, and I, I got my um, I got my grandkids to do the whoops in the house using that puppet. So I, you know, start moving his mouth and talking to him and everything like that. And then I would go whoop whoop, and then oh. whoop. and so every time I would come to visit and everything like that, I would hear this whoop whoop. 
you know. Oh. Um, granddaughter's whooping at me. Oh, that's so <laughs> right, cute. How gotta, old was she? We got to start listening for Sarge to give us the go. Thirty. Okay, thirty seconds. Good job, guys. Love that Bigfoot pen. Hard to see it though. It actually writes pretty good too. I was surprised because you know how sometimes the pens they they look cute but they don't write well. I can write with it. Oh. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Hey, this is the Journey Radio Show, and we're the She Squatchers. Won't you check us out online at shesquatchers.com? And at the top of the page, you can click on our events page and see where we're going to be upcoming. We're, our, our events got moved to the spring, so we're going to be in Washington State with Mel, our guest tonight, this spring. So you're going to have to come check us out in Toppenish, Washington, on the Yakima Indian Reservation. I cannot wait. All right. And so we do, we are on uh, YouTube and we'd love it if you come over and subscribe to our channel and help us win our, our subscribers race. So come on over to She Squatchers Official on YouTube and click subscribe. And so you can get to know whenever we're posting new videos. And we are on Facebook and Instagram. Please come over and like our pages there for all that's happening with us in the now. So back to the show, Mel Scahan from Washington State has left us with a cliffhanger. <laughs> All right, Mel, tell us about It Wasn't the Birds. It was not the birds, the bees, or anything else like that. So what we had following us was uh, a couple of Sasquatches. And um, he goes, well, we have to go back that way. And I was like, they're not going to bother us. I says, it's too open. I said the hiding cover, you know, they they're not going to be able to to allow us to walk right through them because they, you know, they're going to scatter. And so we started. Uh, we ended our day and we started walking back towards our work vehicle. And uh, we got to the work vehicle, went back to camp, um, got dinner ready, and started talking. And I brought a DVD player and we watched the movie. And then around nine fifteen. Uh, at dusk, um, time to turn in because I had to get up at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. And um, so we had our individual tents. Um, he went into his. He likes noise, so he had ear po- AirPods in. And uh, so I, um, just before we were to turn in, I heard this loud wood knock, just this loud power knock, just wham. And it came from our south. And uh, I looked at him and he didn't hear it. And um, so I asked him, I said, did you hear anything? He goes, no, 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 no. I didn't hear anything. I said, okay. I said, we're going to get visited tonight. And he goes, well, what do you mean? I said, well, we're going to have visitors tonight. And uh, so, you know, shook me off and everything like that. And so I went and got in my tent and got in my sleeping bag and uh, just waited for the next events to happen. And I couldn't hear him in his. Uh, and then I heard again. And then I unzipped the tent because the, the wood knock, the second one, um, uh, came from an, a distance away. I went over to his tent and I unzipped it and he was air, AirPods in. And he, I, I scared him and I go, they're here. And then he goes, who's here? What, what's going on? I said, here, if you need to turn the, the, um, the car on, I said, here's the key fob. If you need to beep the horn or whatever, he goes, here it is. And um, so and I went and called him back into my tent and he put his ear pods back in. And about 10 minutes after I got into my tent, I can hear the whoop, the first whoop that came in from the direction of the wood knock. And then opposite that was another tree knock, uh, 90 degrees away from there. And then, so we got a whoop, wood knock, and then I heard a whistle coming from behind his tent. And then I could hear slight chatter coming from over there as well. So he had two of them over in his direction, 
I had one to the south, and then we had one on the other side of the meadow that was wood knocking and then whistling. So this went on for three hours. I'm laying there just in heaven. You know, it was like the, the you know, the Philharmonic of, of Sasquatch. Just would not whistle, whoop, chatter, chatter, chatter going on. And I just sitting there loving every second of it. And I was like, yeah, it's getting late. So I was like, ah, I'm going to turn in. It's, it was about midnight. And um, so I shut down. And, um, and then I'm out for the rest of the night. Other than waking up and hearing, you know, occasional whistle now and then but i was gone i was too tired but just as i fell asleep that's when he woke up his airpods died so you know out came the airpods and he told me when he woke up was he goes i heard something walking and grunting behind my tent he goes and i thought it was you he says i could have swore it was you trying to play a trick on me and then as i'm laying there in bed listening I can hear you moving in your sleeping bag in the tent. And then he's like, oh, crap, that's not Mel. That's something else. And then that's when, you know, he went on high alert. So from 1230 on up until my alarm went off at 430, 445, somewhere around there, he heard one coming up close to his tent, breathing heavily, snapping the brush back and forth around his tent communicating with the other three, four that were with him or her. And um, so he heard the whistles. He heard them talking amongst each other. He heard the howls. He heard the, uh, the whoops. And they said they did, a, they, did, they did do a lot of whistling. And so it just kept going all the way around, not by his tent, but you know, around the meadow that we were camped on. They stayed in the trees. They didn't come walking into the meadow because they would be exposed. So the ones that were the closest to him were the ones that were behind his tent near the tree line. And so he heard two of them talking back and forth, chattering their, chattering their teeth and popping their mouths and just uh, moving back and forth, whoop, whistle, and that went on for the rest of the night for me. And he said he stayed up until my alarm clock had gone off. And then he knew that once I was awake, then he would be safe, that I would be coming out of the tent. He would be a lot, he'd feel more comfortable with me awake, knowing that, you know, what he was hearing, I would hear. But at no time, you know, I gave him the key fob. He could turn on the lights. He could you know, sound the horn. He could have done at that at any time, but he did not. He just laid there flat on his back, still as possible, trying not to make a movement or sound because of the synthetic material that makes a lot of, it's like sandpaper rubbing on sandpaper, you know? And uh, so he came out of the tent as soon as he heard me get out of mine. And then he gave me the full story of everything that I just told you that happened for the next four and a half hours, five hours that he was awake. And he goes, Mel, yes, I never believed in Sasquatch before, but what I heard last night, those were Sasquatches. And uh, you were right. I said, they, they are going to, they are here and they will, you know, they will, I mean, they were following us that day. And I was like, I said, now you're going to, I'm going to teach you how to be more in tune about when you're out here, not just la 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 you know, then you'll, you'll get a full understanding of, of uh, when they approach you and how they're going to approach you. So we went to work the next day, heard the whistles and everything. And same, same repeat thing the next night. As soon as it got dark, as soon as that sun went over the ridge line and it, it got dark, the wood one power knock, whack. And then I go, you heard that one, right? And he goes, yep, I heard that one. I said, they're coming back. I said, are you ready? He goes, I don't know, but let's see what happens. <laughs> and uh, so getting in, he gets in his tent, I get in my tent. About 20 minutes later, you hear the next knock. And then... 
I was like, all right, here they come. Just just like the night before, the exact same thing. Two wood knocks, and then they were in on us, in on, on top of us. And um, so I'm laying there in the tent, and then out there in the middle of nowhere, no light pollution or anything, then I started seeing lights uh, outside my tent. And I was like wondering what was going on. Then I could hear a vehicle coming up the road, and I was like, uh, who's coming up the road? And um, yeah, they drove in on the road that we did, and then they went into the meadow and then drove out to the north, right past us. And I un unzipped the uh, tent, looked out the window, and it was another uh, tribal vehicle. And so he gets out and he goes, who is that? And I was like, I don't know, but we'll find out. And about Oh, about 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes later, you could hear um, owls hooting. So it was the wildlife program out there doing their their owl protocol, locating, locating owls. And um, after they were done, they left. And the rest of the night was pretty much well gone for us. Um, no more activity. They, they had ruined our, 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 our visit for that night. Because I think the Sasquatches thought we called in reinforcements. <laughs> that actually makes sense. Yeah, and uh, but uh, we we had another couple of nights in other spots, but no activity after that. But it's it's fun to see somebody that um, you know you don't you don't have to preach Sasquatch to them and, and get them to believe until you know they they actually get to have that experience to go from a skeptic to a full on believer. And that's what I enjoy about what I do. I know, I, you know, when I do my talks and everything, I don't say this is what they do. This is what they're going to do. I'm, I'm not trying to make it, you know, a skeptic, a believer. You know, it's up to you on how you want to uh, take the information that I, I give you. I think that's exactly the right way to be because people are going to either latch onto it or they're not. And and when they have their own experience, you, you can't you can't get rid of that after you have an experience of your own. Yeah, no, 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 but there was no mistake in what, what happened that night. And uh, so, but uh, we have, what, 10 minutes, somewhere around there? Better get okay, on to that last story, that that, uh, that humdinger. Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, um, this, this, last, this last tenting story is um, something that just happened to us on a trip that we were doing. We had gone to uh, Zion and... Um, uh just a lot of a trip down southwest and um past the grand canyon into new mexico and our last our last spot was going to be arches and moab on our final leg of the trip and uh on the way from new mexico to get to um arches is a uh, canyon lands national forest and there's also canyon lands national park um we couldn't find too much tenting in the area because it's farmland down in that area and farmers don't you know take too kindly to trespassers you know so we stay we avoided that and then um i found i found this national forested area uh outside of monticello utah and um so it is going to take us another hour or so to get there and uh, when we arrived we drove through the town to get to the the national forest and um, we were so tired that we just took the first road to the left into the into the national forest and uh, found a, an open spot and then set up our two man tent and um, got everything the air mattress everything on the inside comfortable enough got inside it was sprinkling out and then just you know busy day long day on the road had another long day, so I was gone. I was out. And next thing you know, uh, my wife, who was sleeping on my right hand side, she um, when we when we have these types of experiences, we don't have any audio auto audio communication. Everything is done by hand signals. And um, so she grabbed my right arm and she started squeezing it until I, I woke up and um so i'm i'm snapping out of my out of my sleep and i'm not fully awake and then next thing you know i see the top of our tent being pushed down 
and it's about two feet above above our heads when it whatever was pushing down on it just let it go now this had been going on for a while my wife had been going through this experience for about 45 minutes before i was awakened she said she heard him walk up and then he stopped off right above our heads and was right above us and then he just started pushing down on top of the tent and then she just let him continue to push down on the tent and let it go. So when she woke, when I was awakened and I saw this tent being pushed down on top of us, I was like, hey, what's going on here? And then they'd let it go. And next thing you know, I see it come down again. And I'm like, and hand signals again, and she's pointing one. And then I'm listening and I got my eyes closed and I go, no, there's, there's two. There's one off to our left. I can hear, I could hear the one off to our left moving in the uh, trees, in the Oregon Oak. And I can also hear him going. <laughs> but this one above us didn't make any sounds. He just kept pushing down onto the top of the tent and then letting it go. And then he pushed down again. And then I'm on the inside and I start shaking. And I'm shaking violently. And then she puts her hand on my shoulders and she's, and I told her I'd be okay. But for some odd reason, I just could not stop shaking. And then once uh, she kept her hand on me and I started to calm down or, or, you know, warm up or whatever was going on with me at that time, this guy was still doing this. And then he takes, he goes over to her side of the tent. Uh, at the at our heads he goes to the corner of the tent and then he picks it up he picks it up about two feet and then we're on we're on the inside as we're experiencing this and we roll to our left both of us just roll off the off the uh, air mattress and then he drops it and then we as quietly as we could scooted back on top of the air mattress and uh, got tried, got comfortable and everything. And then he came back over to the top of us and then he started pushing down on the tent again. And then that this time I could see the hand. I mean, his hand was massive. As I, you could see the fingers, the outlines of the fingers as he pushed down and he was pushing it down further this time. And so he just like sat there and, and enjoyed what was going on. And then this other one off to our left kept doing the same thing. This, uh, and then he kept moving about back and forth into the trees. So what ended this account was the last time that we allowed him to push down onto the tent was when he pushed it all the way down to, to the point where the fabric of the tent hit our faces. And then he held it there for a little bit and then he let go. And then my wife went, and then I knew <laughs> that, that that was it. So um, I said, all right, that's enough. You can go now. And then boom, just as soon as he heard my voice, you can hear him. And then the one off to the left, you can hear him. And both of them, you know, ran off in the same direction. So I asked her, I go, what, was, what, do, what do you want to do? She says, well, I have to go to the bathroom. I said, okay, well, let's go, let's go to the bathroom. So we went on the opposite side of the road that we were parked on because they were over you know, this way. So we wanted to go over there on the other side. So we finished up our business and I was like, I'm not getting messed around with like that again tonight. So I took the car and then I aimed the headlamp, headlights at the tent and uh, to the direction that they ran off. And then I turned the headlights on and then I armed it so the headlights would go off. And then when I turn them on, the headlights would come on. So crawled back into, into the tent and laid down, got comfortable. And I was like, uh, I can't sleep after something like that. And so I turn the lights on. I'd leave them on for a little bit and then I'd turn them off. And then about 20 minutes or so later, I'd turn them back on and then I'd turn them back off because I didn't want to go. I didn't. I wanted to sleep, but I didn't get much sleep the rest of the night. Not, not after that. <laughs> so.
So that was that's the closest that I've been to him uh, is about that much. <laughs> I bet he thought that was a great toy, that tent. <laughs> I, I think he did, yeah. And uh, what what's interesting about that is that when we drove out the next day, we decided to see what was in the area. And there were there were cabins like within a quarter mile where we where we were at just outside the uh, the national forest uh, boundary. So, you know, those people that live in those cabins, I guarantee you that they, you know, have visitors every great once in a while. And I'm sure that they may know about it as well. But out out in the middle of just some camping spot that we picked out just to lay low for the night and get on the road next day, then boom, we have a Sasquatch encounter. That is so go. cool. That is so cool. So how did your, did your wife think it was playful or was she getting scared? Uh, no, no, no. Um, I mean, she's had a lot worse done with, uh, you know, having them mind speak to her about wanting to get out of the tent. And uh, so this one here, she didn't feel threatened by. Uh, she knew as he was just testing his boundaries and uh, seeing if, uh, you know, you know, what is it, what is it going to take to wake these two up or, you know. <laughs> get a response out of them. them. Yeah, I lifted the tent on, tent out of them. I mean, what, they're still asleep because I was still you, snoring. I was going to say, <laughs> were you still snoring? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I could have kept that up if I was you. Uh, oh, that, yeah. that reminds me, there was a question in the chat room. Um, they wanted to know, what if you set up a tent fitted with a remote control audio player or a phone into the device via Bluetooth and broadcast snoring sounds? What do you think the results would be of that? Um, I think, you know, the, the, you know, the steps that I lined out was, you know, knowing, introducing respect, uh, looking around to see if they'd been in the area, um, letting them know that you're there just to camp and everything else like that without doing any harm to them. You know, there's certain steps that you, uh, as you go along this, I mean, then you can start recording if you want, but, um, we've had, we've invited people along with us to these spots that uh, I've, I've mentioned. And um, when you get a larger group, more than, you know, three or four vehicles, th that that killed the, uh, the interaction for us. But when we would go back out there by ourselves, then they were back on us. But when we invited other people into the group, into the area, then uh, there was uh, little to no activity. But uh, I... I I had an audio recorder on one event, but, you know, I, I told them, I, and I told myself that I, you know, that's not, I'm not there to collect anymore. And so I think that's changed my, my interaction with them. I totally okay. understand that. I totally understand that. I think, I think you can get a lot more interaction when you're just out there for the experience for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, and I, I have, and, and you know, I mentioned before that I, I, I proved them to myself, and I, I, I totally love the interaction that I have with them because it's all been playful, no, nothing negative, and uh, it's, it's just the, the, the respect that you pay for the one does get around, and you know, they'll, they, they, they have their own internet, you know, communication lines to each other, and so I, you know, I think that has something to do with. Uh, the respect that I paid for the one is, you know, is either changed the glow about me or, I mean, Jen would know that. I mean, she would see, she would see that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, that music says that we're at the end of the show, so we have to thank Mel again for coming on, and we're hoping you'll come back another time and share more stories with us. Uh, we promise we'll bring it back so everybody loves you. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Jen. And, thank uh, you. And uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's still back there. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and have a good night. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay, I don't know why, but the recording won't stop, so I'm going to just have to hang up the call. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs>